Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we're taking a look at a new offering from us at Brody Precision, and that is Ping CX, a software package for autonomously commissioning your buildings and uh, your sites maybe with multiple buildings. So let's jump on to their web website real quick. We'll do a quick overview, and then we'll jump into the software, and I'll take you on a quick uh, tour of what you can expect to get out of Ping CX. So let's jump over here real fast. So as I mentioned, uh, autonomous commissioning uh, application for buildings. So this allows you to automate your startup process, your checkout process, and then your commissioning of your BMS systems. The way this operates is it typically is communicating with your BMS through BACnet, um, and it has support for things like Project Haystack to make your um, port point names normalized uh, across all of your sites. This can be run locally or in the cloud, and uh, we'll be looking at one of the cloud installs here in a moment. And then, as I also mentioned, you can do this across uh, many buildings, many projects, many clients, and uh, many sites. And you can do it with multiple users. So if you needed uh, you know, a bunch of your guys, a bunch of your techs to have access to see what your issues are, you have the ability to do that. And then on the uh, rule building side or the test building side, um, it's very intuitive to do. Uh, the idea for the software package kind of comes from this idea of test-driven development, which is pretty popular in the software development space. And... Um, They've leveraged it for building um, automation specifically and uh, made it a lot easier than uh, test-driven development typically is for developers. So it's very uh, easy to jump in and make some tests yourself without too much of an effort. So let's jump over into the software now. So I'm logged into just a, a demo version of the software running in the cloud. And as we can see over here on the left, we have the ability out of the box to run across many different clients if you needed to do that. I know my Springfield Univers University one here has uh, some good stuff in it. So I'll jump over there. We can see, okay, for this particular time period, we've had a bunch of uh, tests that have failed. Um, a bunch, bunch that have succeeded as well. And uh, we can also see reports, if we had them, of uh, things that maybe had failed, what they were, um, that kind of thing. And if I dig into my Health Services Center site here, and this uh, site gives us some additional configuration options, we have our agents, that's sort of where the um, application is going to be running its tests locally. And then our interface is how we're going to be talking to the actual BMS. This is where you're going to set your IP address, your port, all that stuff to make the BACnet connection work. If I go back to my projects and dig into this BMS installation project, we can see we now have this thing called a strategy. A strategy is kind of a saved group of rules that we maybe want to run. So I'll go into my commissioning tests here and then go into the com configuration tab and we can see all of these features that we have here, which are our tests that are actually running um, against this particular project. So I'll jump into this plant one and give you an idea of what you can expect out of the these tests. So at the very top, we have a, sort of a basic description of what the test is, scenario. In this particular one, we're looking at this CAC11 zone temperature, and then we have steps underneath it. So given no preconditions, so we're not setting anything or doing anything prior to the test actually running, then we're expecting our zone temperature to be between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, if we're between those two temperatures, that's a success. If we're not between those temperatures, that's a failure. And then we do the same thing across many different points here to check our points out. But then we get down a little bit further and look at things like um, our fan control to make sure the fan control is working properly. If our, given that our system enable for our dry cooler is enabled, 
I want to override our fan command to enabled. Then we're going to wait. Then uh, we're going to confirm that the fan is actually on. And then we'll raise a failure there or not, depending on what uh, the status is. If it's okay, obviously it's we're succeeding. And then we're going to override the fan command to disabled, wait, and then we're going to expect to see that our status on that is off. If it's off, then we succeed that test. If it's not off, then we've obviously failed. On and on, we can get more and more complicated. Things like this uh, fan control. If I override the outdoor air temperature, then uh, I am expecting a bunch of different things to happen. If they happen, then we've succeeded our test. If they don't happen, we've failed, and there's something that we need to look at to confirm that our control sequence is operating properly or maybe something physically is wrong with the uh, equipment that we're trying to control. So that is the gist of uh, what we're looking at here from Ping CX. I do want to pull up a report here real fast. All right, so I pulled up a report here. And if we scroll down, we can see, okay, we ran 115 tests across a bunch of different equipment. 77 of them succeeded, 38 of them failed. And we can see also that the amount of time that it took to go through every one of them. Obviously, this is physical testing of physical equipment. So the speed is not going to be uh, incredibly fast. You wouldn't want it to be and you wouldn't expect it to be as you're uh, going through and you know changing a set point, waiting some period of time, and then expecting to see a physical change based on that um, set point change as an example. Um, we can see we tested across a bunch of different kinds of equipment. And then we can see the actual test that we ran. So these are our point-to-point -point tests. And then we had some sequence tests. There was a failure here on our pump lead lag. So now we know, okay, we should probably go back there and test that. Um, we also can see that we're getting um, graphics because of the setup process when you go to initially set up how PinkCX is talking to your site. Uh, you have the ability to add in how the graphics are pulled up and it gives you the ability to show a screenshot of what the specific uh, piece of equipment's graphic looked like um, while you were doing these tests. So we can see here our zone temperature failed on this particular uh, VAV. Uh, this VAV, everything checked out except for our max flow and our open. Um, and so on. So there's a lot of uh, coverage here in the report so that you could have something for your reference in the future, documentation that you could give to your uh, end user to show that, hey, everything's working as expected, um, or to give you a punch list of things that you need to uh, fix up before you turn it over to your contractor or your uh, end user. So hopefully that was informative and helpful for you. Definitely worth checking out Ping CX if um, this kind of thing looks interesting to you. It certainly could save you a bunch of time with uh, the fact that you no longer need to go through each of these pieces of equipment and manually check things out yourself. Uh, having the computer do it is always the, the best way to uh, go about these things, get rid of the human error as much as possible. So thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.